baseball, basketball, football in one fantasy league. 12 hours we sat there. You could trade Mike Trout for LeBron James. It's, it's amazing, by the way. I advise you to do it um, if you want to get divorced. Where do I, where do I sign up? Yeah, right. LGofleagues.com. It's called the League of Leagues. LGofleagues.com. You can beta test it. It's really cool. But what I ended up doing, I ended up writing about it. And it just took like a, you know, multi-way audio recording stuck it in a table. It just got sound. Some interviews, but some just ambient sound. And that became a podcast. And it wasn't any great effort. It wasn't the most polished podcast ever. But it was something. It gives you a feel for it. And uh, other guys who were at the table, it was all media professionals in the industry, one of them had a video camera and he shot some stuff and whatever. So, yeah, it's because the technology's gotten easier now, you know, any schmuck can do it. I'm not, I can't do it that well. I'm not a filmmaker, I'm not an audio engineer, but like, you can wait it a little bit. And I think that does add to people's experience. I, I feel like you know, the more you can engage, the better. I mean, even if you just think about social media a little bit, Instagram is very different than Twitter, for instance. I'm, I'm fairly new to Instagram. Like, I'm still kind of getting the hang of it or whatever. Um, at Jonah Carey. At Jonah Carey. For all your lighthouse pictures. <laughs> I, I think they're all. Yeah, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. Uh, MySpace, Friendster. So you're not battling another Jonah Carey. Dogster. There, J Carey is not a name that exists, and there's nobody named Jonah my age, so we're good. Um, yeah, it's just you engage with things in different ways. I mean, I feel like... You guys would have that too, where obviously it's very well suited to Instagram, clearly because it's visual, um, but there are different ways to connect. And so from the standpoint of us, of writers, you really can do a lot of things. And if you're fortunate enough to get a platform where you get to yap, yap, yap on TV or whatever, then that changes things and it makes it uh, fun. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what my dream job is. I don't know exactly what I want to do, but things get presented to me. Like, you want to try this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that sounds... Interesting, not that writing is boring, I love it, I would only that gladly, but when other opportunities present themselves, okay, you, you go for it. I'd like to talk about how maybe you see that changing. You, you mentioned you talked to the GM of the, or the, the marketing guy over at the White Sox. So what are some of the things that they're looking at experimenting? They had a fan cave. Uh, I think you know, brands can learn a lot from teams in the ways that they interact with their audiences because their audiences are so passionate and they have to foster those by trying new things. What, what are some of the things that, that you're hearing that maybe you, you imagine sports, sports media looking like in five, ten years? There is one common denominator with all humans. Well, it's kind of a, a two denominators in one thing. One, almost all humans like to drink. Two, almost all humans like to flirt with each other. Those are the two things. And uh, the Colorado Rockies, not this is not the White Sox, but it's the Rockies, have a party deck in right field. They took out 3,500 seats, and they just made it this long party deck. And again, I'm married, but a lot of my Denver friends are super not married, and it's like Tinder and the best party you've ever seen, and whatever, all in one, during the ball game. And I know that other teams are starting to experiment with this, but nobody does it better than Ford's Field because it's also in the middle of downtown. So you pre-game, you do that, you post-game. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Uh, they have a milkshake where they take Strand Hands whiskey and just go like this. And it's a milkshake. Go to Coors Field is what I'm telling you. And uh, that's cool, you know, it's different. And I mean, when I was growing up going to ball games, it's like you can get a hot dog or you can get a crappy soda or beer and that's it. And yeah, food is one of it, but just like, Thinking differently is a great idea, especially if you've got a pretty nice city and you can use it to your advantage. Teams are doing that more. Uh, I'm friends with um, Tony Khan. His dad owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's like the head of analytics for the Jaguars. And uh, very smart, interesting guy. And uh, he wasn't directly involved in this, but sort of indirectly. The Jaguars are kind of a small market team, so they have to figure it out. They put a swimming pool in their stadium. Arizona Diamondbacks have that too. But the Jags, it's like a Vegas pool. Like, have the Dodgers jumped in that one yet? Or they have not. Maybe. I'll let you know that could be a good cross sport promotion. Uh, I'm sure Marcus appreciates that. But um, yeah, no, it's one of those things that's like, people get cabanas, and it's literally, it's like Vegas. And I just think that there are opportunities to try different things, especially if they're really, social things that people are going to uh, be interested in. So absolutely, I mean, the more, I mean, something like this, this is obviously more low key than Scranton Hands Whiskey and 3,500 single people, but whatever. Just wait till we release these people. Yeah, yeah, that's it, after a couple, we'll see what happens, yeah. So we've talked about some of the changes sort of off the field in, in the fan experience. Uh, I'd like to talk about some of the things going on the field. So there's a lot of talk about how uh, baseball needs to be a faster game. And I'd first like to know whether or not you think that needs to be the case, if we need to improve pacing or you know, remove uh, pitching changes or, or something like that. But uh, just in general, what do you see if, if you and I come back here in 25 years and watch a baseball game, 
what's it going to look like? Is it going to be mostly the same, or are there going to be a lot of changes? Advertising on sleeves? What's, what's, what's next? I will tell you exactly. 25 years from now, the Montreal Expo will be the 10-time defending World Series champions. <laughs> and whatever with the rest of it. Um, yeah, I... I think the pace of game and length of game are a little different. And actually, Rob Manfred came to Bristol. And I flew out there, and all the ESPN people were there. And he gave like a talk to us. It was also a Sloan conference. And he said, let's differentiate between those two things. And I kind of agree with that. I think one can lend itself to the other. But ultimately, I don't think people are as bothered by length as they are by pace. There could be a football game that could last a long time, or hot, whatever sport. But if you feel like you're into it, that's fine. The guy steps out of the box, scratches his nuts, whatever, it gets boring. This guy, Travis Sotchik, is a friend of mine. He has a great book coming out called Big Data Baseball on the Pirates, which I really recommend. It'll be on like May. I do cause marketing for people, but okay. And um, he just put a stopwatch on how long people spend outside the batter's box in this one Pirates, let's say, Diamondbacks game. 39 minutes and 51 seconds in one game, dudes just standing outside the batter's box. Cut that in half. Maybe it'll take, maybe take 20 minutes off the game and you just made it better paced. And uh, I'm not even sure we need a pitch clock for that. Literally, you just have to get the umpire to enforce the rule, which is you have to stand in the batter's box. You're not actually technically allowed to go for a walk. So they're going to do it probably more aggressively. The clock will be the enforcer, so to speak, it seems like. But uh, yeah, I'm for that. I think generally speaking, just kind of keeping the, the solid pace of the game. If you go watch a game from 1982, the pitch is just there. They get it, and they chuck it, they get it, and they chuck it. The best pitcher, Steve Carlton, or Tom Seaver, all those guys did that. So that would help. Mira Petit. Use Mira Petit, who's my man. I love Use Mira Petit, like more than anything. More than my children. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, what other changes? I think the age of the Universal by then, I think it'll be in the National League too. Um, honestly, I think that this isn't even baseball specifically, but we were talking about PDs before. I wonder if that'll start to change a little bit, if there'll be more tolerance. Not that everybody's just gonna like walk into the clubhouse, sign a contract, here's your needle, but I think that, th that there will be some sort of different environment than there is now. I mean, I live in Colorado, like things are loosening up, period, with controlled substances, and obviously performance enhancement are different, I get that. Um, but I just think that's this kind of liberties, like this is my body, whatever thing, that even though in sports it's a little trickier because yeah, how does it affect your results? I just think that society's gonna go that way because it's, one of the things about, this is slightly political, but one of the things about society is that people are split, you're left or you're right. This is kind of universal, it's like don't mess with my crap. That's sort of everybody's on board with that. I feel like if you're left or right or whatever. So I think that could change. Um, and yeah, there's gonna be some unforeseen stuff that we don't necessarily see. I think that, uh, I imagine the marketing of the game will get better. I imagine that the ballpark experience will get better. TV will be more interesting. Every stadium will be wired. Whatever device it is we have in 25 years will be, you know, zapped to your brain. You know, ways to interact with the game. They're different. I feel like a telecast might look like a video game. Because I feel like every yeah. time they add something, I'm like, oh yeah, I saw that in MLB The Show five years ago. And now we have totally. Uh, I'm not the biggest gamer, but like, yeah, I mean, I, I, my understanding of it is, yeah, that seems to be the way it's going, and I just think the visual displays lend itself to that. And I don't object to that, by the way. Like, I definitely like the lore of baseball and stand usual and whatever, uh, but I also appreciate wanting to bring people in. I mean, ultimately, what I do for a living, I guess, is partly predicated on people watching the damn game. Um, so yeah, I think that if you can court people in different ways, it's a fun sport, and let's find a way to make it interesting to more people. Yeah, let's touch on it. Um, so instant replay, I'm for instant replay. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, aside from Lifehouse and being the official avatar of the Montreal Expos, I guess the other thing that I might be known for is I, I'm a big fan of the concept of robot umpires. I believe that all human umpires should be rounded up and thrown in the ocean. And uh, we should have robots inside of the game, or technology being more impactful in the game. And <laughs> I like what they've done so far. But I think they could be they could be more efficient at it. They really should have just like an official at every stadium, just hire a guy. And um, they have all this money that was um, these bonuses for international players when, when teams go over the cap, like for Yohan Moncada, the Red Sox signed him. Major League Baseball just got a check for or is about to get a check for sixty million dollars. They literally don't have anywhere in the CBA what it is that they were supposed to allocate that for. It's just sixty million dollars that are sitting there. Hire a replay official in all 30 stadiums, you'll still have enough money left over to like get a Willie Mays statue in every stadium of baseball. Or implement the international draft, which seems to be 
the big rumor. Well, that will happen too. Well, go ahead. Yeah, the strike zone is a little trickier, but I'll tell you something. Like this, the big thing, one of the things in baseball right now is pitch framing. People are like, this guy frames pitches. Pitch framing just means the umpire kind of messed up. That's sort of what it means. And I, I'm for more universality in the game. I feel like the human element is great if it's a player. If the player's going through a divorce and he hits 220, yeah, okay. But if the umpire's going through a divorce, well, I don't want him to mess up the game. That's Or if he just is bad at umpiring. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of replay. Like I said, they're being a little slow right now. I'd like to see them fine tune it. But Major League Baseball has the money to do anything they want to, pretty much. It's, the the industry has so much money. So, yeah, I think it could be fixed and, and it could even get, get it, uh, even better. When you look at some of the ways that the teams are interacting with the fans, whether it's through a Twitter account or it's through something like the fan cave, what do you see that's being really successful out there? What are some uh, what are some teams that a brand, you know, if there's a brand marketer in here, can look to and say, oh, they're, they're engaging in a really interesting way with their audience. Maybe I can take some, take some lessons from that. The Dodgers come to mind immediately. I know the PR people a little bit, and uh, I just think they engage in a really good way. But I'm, I have to admit that Twitter is my social media platform of choice, even though I understand that as a writer, it's not, secretly not that good. Like, but it's such a nice place for everyone. Yeah, I like it, it's fun, but if you want to get your message out, you still have to go to crappy old Facebook. But no, you know, if you're working Facebook, sorry, but not sorry. Um, yeah, it's just, that's, that's a better way to disseminate the message. But the Dodgers do a good job of that anyway. And um, I think that in general, team feeds, like anything, LA Kings, I actually love LA Kings. LA Kings are really good at this too. It's very irreverent. There's like friendly trash talking between teams. Like the Columbus Blue Jackets will be playing the Minnesota Wild. I'm like, oh, we got you. And then they'll hold up a picture of, here's our Stanley Cup banner that we won last year, you know what I mean? And. Um,